Good morning, good morning, friends. Good morning, friends. This morning, as we have once again gathered to spend time in the presence of God, especially on this great day where we celebrate our 75th Independence Day, may we ask God to be in our midst as we, uh, as we call on his name, as we sing to him, as we read his word. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray that you open our hearts and minds to receive directions from you and also your strength so that we may fulfill every task that is given to us faithfully. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. God has made a promise of faithfulness to us. And we can trust the promise. Let us worship our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Lord God, creator and father of all, you have called us in freedom to take part in building of a great nation. Teach us the path of true greatness, so that following the steps of your Son, we may seek not to be served, but to serve, and to work together for the common good. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We would now have the reading from the Old Testament. The Old Testament reading is taken from the first book of Kings, chapter 3, verses 5 to 15. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask, what shall I give you? And Solomon said, you have shown great mercy to your servant David, my father, because he walked before you in truth, in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with you. You have continued his great kindness for him and you have given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. Now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king instead of my father David. But I am a little child I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of your people whom you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to be numbered or counted. Therefore, give to your servant an understanding heart to judge your people, that I may discern between good and evil. For who is able to judge this great people of yours? The speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. Then God said to him, Because you have asked this thing, and have not asked long life for yourself, nor have asked riches for yourself, nor have asked the life of your enemies, but you have asked for yourself understanding to discern justice. Behold, I have done according to your words. See, I have given you a wise and understanding heart, so that there has not been anyone like you before you, or shall any like you arise after you. And I have also given you what you have not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be anyone like you among the kings of kings all your days. So if you walk in my ways to keep my statutes and my commandments, as your father David walk, then I will lengthen your days. Then Solomon awoke, and indeed it had been a dream. And he came to Jerusalem and stood before the ark of the covenant of the Lord, offered up burnt offerings, offered peace offerings, and made a feast for all his servants. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God. We would now have the responsive reading from Psalm 33. Psalm 33, verses 12 to 19. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. The people he has chosen has his own inheritance. The Lord looks from heaven. He sees all the sons of men. From the place of his dwelling, he looks on all the inhabitants of the earth. He fashions their hearts individually. He considers all their works. No king is saved by the multitude of an army. A mighty man is not delivered by great strength. A horse is a vain hope for safety. Neither shall it deliver any by its great strength. Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his mercy. To deliver their souls from death and to keep them alive 
in famine. We would now have the reading from the New Testament. The New Testament reading is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 to 11. Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preached to you, which also you received and in which you stand, by which also you are saved. If you hold fast that word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you, first of all, that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, and that he was seen by Cephas, then by the twelve. After that, he was seen by over 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remained to the present, but some have fallen asleep. After that, he was seen by James, then by all the apostles. Then last of all, he was seen by me also, as by one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles, who am not worthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace towards me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Therefore, whether it was I or they, so we preach and so you believed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to, be to God. God. The gospel reading for this morning has been taken from St. Luke chapter 18, verse 9 onwards. Also, he spoke this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as a tax collector. Fast twice a week, I give tithe of all that I possess. And the tax collector standing far off would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast and saying, God, have mercy, God be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to thee, O Christ. We will all affirm our faith by saying the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all things visible and invisible. And in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of life, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, through whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. He shall come again by the glory to judge both the quick and dead whose kingdom have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
dear friends, this morning, uh, I'm happy to uh, say that, uh, that this morning, the message that will be brought to us would be uh, by Deacon Paul George. And uh, uh, we pray that God will lead and guide him as he shares the word this morning. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Our Lord, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the restful and peaceful night, for having refreshed us, renewed our energy levels, rejuvenated us. We humbly ask you to bless us, that with your hearing and healing and your abiding presence, right through the day, we may be able to see your living presence in our lives. We ask for your mercy and grace and for the Holy Spirit to protect us. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our rock, our refuge, and our redeemer. Amen. The theme for this morning's meditation, and I've called it God be merciful to me, a sinner. If you recall last Sunday, the good Reverend Avinash took us to the temple scene where Jesus had to chase out the money changers, the traders, and he said that he, they had made it a den of thieves. So today, we are going to revisit the temple scene. In fact, I've called this the sequel to the temple scene. But before we actually plunge into the meat of today's uh, meditation, may I take you and give you a historical perspective. The temple was the center of Jewish life. It was where all necessary sacrifices were made. Pilgrims from all across the Roman Empire came there to celebrate the festivals of the Jewish year. It was also importantly, the nexus between the Roman Empire, the Roman imperial power and the institutions of Judaism, very especially the priestly caste. It was not just a place. It was the center of Jewish religious tradition, rituals, thoughts, and beliefs. This is probably one of those wonderful parables which are only recorded in the Gospel of uh, St. Luke. That is the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector. In this parable, Jesus contrasts the proud Pharisee with the humble tax collector who recognizes his need for forgiveness. On the surface, uh, today's parable may seem to be one of those easy ones. A Pharisee and a tax collector go to the temple to pray. The Pharisee gives thanks to God that he isn't a tax collector and praises himself for his own righteousness. Secondly, he says that he tithes on all his possessions. Thirdly, he fasts twice a week. On the other hand, the tax collector simply prays, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. And Jesus finishes this story or this parable with the judgment that's likely to come for all of us. The tax collector went home justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and for the man who humbled himself will be exalted. Now, Jesus spoke about this particular parable to some people who prided themselves on being virtuous and despised everyone else. For everyone else was below his level. Jesus gives a caricature of this Pharisee who is inordinately proud of his achievements. One who completes all that is required 
of the law and even more. Besides, Jesus describes the Pharisee as praying to himself. And this would suggest that the prayers of this man may never reach God. They are simply an expression of his pride, his self-obsession, which is accompanied by a judgmental attitude to others. Here is a caution for us. Judgmental attitude towards others. The Pharisee recounted all his good habits that made him superior. He fasted more often than the others and required, than required and gave lots of money to the temple. He could have gone on and on. He's probably Mr. Goody Two Shoes, an ideal citizen. I'm sure he was a caring father, a loving husband, a dutiful son. He paid all his debts and he paid them on time. He studied the scriptures religiously and attended the synagogue. He was a proud man. For a moment, let us give him that feeling of being a very proud man. On the other hand, the tax collector recognizes the need for forgiveness. The gospel are replete with examples and references to tax collectors who were often dishonest and while being dishonest, they sought the company of Jesus along with other sinners. The tax collector is deeply conscious of his need of God. He stands far away because he recognizes the God of holiness is to be found in the temple and he feels unworthy to come closer. He's a man of genuine faith and he beats his breast in an honest expression of his need. The tax collector was not proud. He had sold out to the Romans. He collected taxes on behalf of the Romans, which enabled them to garrison uh, soldiers in, in, in Israel. He helped the Romans keep their, his own countrymen under their power and control. It was a dirty job, but it paid very well. I repeat that. It was a dirty job and it was paid very well. The tax collector went to a corner of it. The tax collector went to the corner of the temple where he alone, where he alone could be with his shame. He could not even look up to heaven as was the custom of those days. He was ashamed and he had good reason to be ashamed. Head down and the spirit broken. Head down and the spirit totally broken. He prayed and he cried to God, God be merciful to me, a sinner. Now you must realize tax collectors are very unpopular, perceived as complicit with the Roman administration and greedy to boot. But we may take the Pharisee at his word. Now this is what the Pharisee is trying to compare himself. And this is what he says, thank God I am not like the tax collector. I believe he had a choice and he made a choice of not being a tax collector. Here is where we are reminded of the decisions we make. Just like the Pharisee decided when he made his choice of not being a tax collector. We are repeatedly reminded of the decisions we make that take us down roads we never would have imagined and make us the kind of people that we may not even recognize or not even want to be. So the Pharisee had good reason to give thanks or to pride, I leave it aside. It's good reason to give thanks. What begs the question now is, is it just a comparison between the Pharisee and the tax collector? I think there is a lot more to that. 
And what we can find here is, we are about to learn something more about God's nature from this. Remember, Jesus told this parable to those who consider themselves righteous and looked upon others with great contempt. In other words, to people very much like ourselves who are in the habit of judging others, what we do so and when we think so, we often think we are judging by God's own standards and not our own. We've got to rethink this. Jesus did not come for the righteous, but for the sinners. This statement may be a little surprising and even confusing. Jesus did not come for the righteous, but he came for the sinners. As I said, this would be a little confusing. Because Jesus should have said that he came for all people, the righteous and the sinners. But what we must understand is no one is truly righteous. In other words, everyone is, is a sinner and is in need of our Savior. By speaking this way, Jesus was addressing the self-righteous attitude of the Pharisees who seemed to think that Jesus should associate only with those without sin. In fact, alluding to the fact that, you know, he should be associating only with the Pharisees because they acted as they were righteous. And that Jesus would associate with them and not any others who are not publicly known as sinners. Sadly, and very sad, the sin of the Pharisee was far greater and graver in nature than the sin of the tax collector. And the reason is this. The Pharisee was guilty of sin, of spiritual pride. The Pharisee was guilty of sin, of spiritual pride. He complicates and compounds his error in the sin by presuming that he is righteous. Not only does he have the spiritual pride, he compounds the error by thinking that he is righteous. Friends, we must remember, when we fail to recognize our own sin, God cannot forgive us. We will not be able to repent. And unless we repent, God is not going to forgive us. Through this very powerful condemnation of the Pharisee and others who are guilty of being self-righteous, it is is also, and this is a key thing, it is also an invitation from Jesus to all who readily admit their sin. When we humble ourselves before the perfection of God and see sins in the light of his glory, we will be tempted to despair. We will be tempted to feel shame of our sins. Hold that thought for a moment. But this shame will turn into joy and freedom when we allow our Lord to act, to act as a master physician and divine healer in our lives. What was the purpose of Jesus? The purpose of his earthly life was to bring healing. It was to bring healing to our wounds of sin. When we realize how his perfect mercy perfectly heals us, we will readily run to him. Secondly, this is very important. We should also remember that judgment we make on others, our contempt for their action, their beliefs, their values may not be the last word. In fact, it's definitely not the last word. This judgment is definitely on our part, not the last word. So let me end with a word of caution. When we are riding high, when we are smug, and uh, self-satisfied, and we need no uh, grace, uh, we will receive none. Just like water of a sun-baked clay, it'll run off. Water will just run off. So also, God's grace will wash over us without any effect. But in our seasons of brokenness, in our seasons of brokenness, should remind us of our need to prepare and to receive God's grace. 
And when we repent of our sins, God forgives us and cleanses us from all righteousness. Those of us who have our Bibles, may I request you to turn to the first letter of uh, St. John, the first letter of uh, St. John, chapter 1, verse 9. First letter of St. John, chapter 1, verse 9. When we repent of our sins, God forgives our sins and cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Also, what Apostle Paul had to say uh, in his letter to the Romans, uh, chapter 3, verses 10 and 2. There is no one, not one, who is righteous. Let us admit to ourselves, we have fallen short. We need his mercy. We need his grace. And that's the gospel. And that's the good news. May the good Lord guide, lead, and bless us all the days of our lives. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, we come before thee, heads bowed down, broken in spirit, with repentant and contrite hearts. We admit, O Lord, that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. O oh God, be merciful unto me, a poor and miserable sinner. This prayer I make in the matchless name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I once again take this opportunity to thank Deacon Paul George for this wonderful message this morning, a very apt and practical way of looking at the scriptures. May God continue to use him for his glory. Let us join together in sharing the peace. Where two or three are gathered together in my name, says the Lord, there I am in the midst of them. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you. Kindly share with your neighbors, saying the peace of the Lord be with you. Friends, this morning, uh, we would like to thank everyone for participating, both in the flag hoisting as well as in the service that followed. I want to thank all the uh, people who joined the service. May you continue to be encouraged and uh, encourage others also to participate in this common time of prayer. For uh, a gentle reminder uh, and also a big thank you for all those who have been contributing so far uh, generously both towards uh, offertory and also earmark donations for specific outreaches. I would like to thank you uh, for doing your contributions. May I encourage others who would like to make use of this opportunity. Please use these details that are on the screen. You may also get in touch with the treasurer. Uh, Gladson Somerville, uh, so that you can inform him in case you make any contribution so that he will be able to maintain the records. This morning, I would also like to thank uh, all those involved in getting the, uh, setting this uh, service up, and I would like to thank uh, for their contribution. This morning, I would also like to make an announcement with regard to the diocese and office bearers. There, are, there has been a change from 7th August 2021. Reverend Rajendra Bosley, the Presbyter of St. James Church Thane, has been appointed as diocesan secretary. Mani Kumar David uh, from St. Stephen's Bhanduk Church has been uh, appointed as the diocesan treasurer. Um, Reverend Avinash Rangaya has been appointed as the Vice President for Bombay Diocesan Council. I 
kindly keep the office bearers in your prayers, especially as they uh, do decisions on behalf of the diocese. Uh, I would especially like the congregation to keep the senior citizens in your prayer, uh, those who are unable, uh, unable to go out or have any kind of contact with others, kindly pray for them. Especially pray for those who are uh, suffering and those who are being healed. Uh, please uh, remember uh, our bishop, our former bishop, right reverend. Joshua, that God's healing hand would be upon him, that God would strengthen him and help him in the days. We also pray for a senior citizens like Zenobia, uh, Renuka David, uh, Alan and Rajati Moses, and any others who are unable to be uh, with us this morning. Continue to keep them in your personal prayers. Those celebrating their birthdays this morning are uh, Rekha Joshi, Lena Phillips, uh, Shaesh uh, Ravichandran, Joseph Henry Long, Abraham Jacob, uh, Supriya Telgote, Sudhir Devkulu, and uh, Minal Pastala. And those celebrating their birthdays, Moshmi and Sugan Samuel, and Supriya and Nishan Daniel. We will be praying for them and singing for them after the after the service is over. May I gently once again remind the congregation that we are updating the birthday list and the wedding anniversary list. In case for any reason your name or the names of your loved ones have been missed, kindly inform us so that we can update the list at the earliest. We especially need to pray for the children, those who are going to uh, those who are going to write their exams and those who have got their results as they make decisions uh, regarding their future. We especially pray for also those uh, youngsters who are with us and they are also going to different parts of the country and abroad to study. Uh, especially remember Dinesh as he goes to study. May God's uh, protection be upon him uh, during his study time. we would now have intercessory prayers. Let us pray for the whole Church of Christ and for all men according to their needs. In our prayers today, we put all our thoughts and worries and hopes into the hands of God. We place into the hands of God the life of this cathedral, the people around us, and those who are not here today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We place into the hands of God our difficulties and frustrations and our hopes and our worries about the future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We place into the hands of God the life of the church in all the world, all people in the world who bring God's love to others, all people who are in danger because they share the love of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We place into the hands of God the leaders of the church, Premchand, our moderator, Dharmaraj, the moderator of Church of South India, Theodosius, the Metropolitan of the Martoma Church, Prakash, our Bishop, Avinash, our Presbyter, and Paul, our Deacon, that by their life and doctrine, they may set forth thy true and life-giving word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We place into the hands of God a world that needs peace, a world that needs wisdom, a world that needs healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We place into the hands of God our country, as today we celebrate the Independence Day. We thank you for the liberty of worship which we enjoy. We thank you for the founders of our nation. Lord, 
in your mercy hear our prayer we place into the land into the hands of god the poor of our own and every land those who live in fear and all who hold the lives of others in their hands lord in your mercy hear our prayer we place into ha into hands of god's our families we especially remember members of the congregation who are celebrating their birthdays rekha joshi lena phillips Shail shailesh ravichandran joseph henry abraham jacob supriya telugote sudhir deklu moshmi and sugand who sell and nishant and supriya who celebrate their anniversaries we also remember our neighbors and all those we know who are suffering lord in your mercy hear our prayer we place into the hands of god all those families who have lost their loved ones may the peace of god rest with them lord in your mercy merciful, merciful father, father accept, accept these, these prayers, prayers for, the, for sake the sake of your, your son, son our, our savior, savior jesus, jesus christ, christ. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for our nation. Almighty God, 
who has given us this good land for our heritage, we humbly beseech thee that we may always prove ourselves a people mindful of thy favor and glad to do thy will. Bless our land with honorable industry, sound learning and pure manners. Save us from violence, discord and confusion, from pride and arrogance and from every evil way. Defend our liberties and fashion into one united people the multitudes brought thither out of many kindred and tongues. Endure with spirit of wisdom those to whom in thy name we entrust the authority of government, that there may be justice and peace at home, and that through obedience of thy law we may show forth thy praise among the nations of the earth. In the time of prosperity, fill our hearts with the thankfulness, and in the day of trouble, suffer not our trust in thee to fail. All which we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray the prayer that our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray and receive the blessing of God in faith. We meet as family in the presence of our Heavenly Father. We meet as brothers and sisters in Christ, accepting the responsibility this places upon us to love one another as you have loved us. We meet as your light in this dark world and pray that through your words and our actions, others might be drawn into your family and accept you as their Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of God with parts with all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge of God, uh, knowledge and the love of God and of His Son Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth into the world, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.